Yesterday we talked about the difference between a vector and a scalar. Who remembers what that difference was? Simon? Good. I'm glad you said it exactly the way you said it. And Simon said, a scalar has just magnitude, a vector has both magnitude and direction. Some people, when I ask them to distinguish between a vector and a scalar, say, a vector has, mag sorry, a vector has direction. Yes, it does. A vector does have direction. But it's important to say what else it has as well. It has magnitude and direction, and a scalar has magnitude. All right, good. We remember that by, of course, thinking about the vector serial. A vector serial is not a vector, but it is the one that has the directions for use on the side of it. So it's a way for us at least to remember that a vector is the one with direction as opposed to the scalar. There's three terms that we learned yesterday as well, distance, position, and displacement. We haven't learned the last three, so don't worry about those yet. Can you tell me which one or ones of these three are scalars? Distance, position, displacement, scalars. Yep. Good. Just distance is a scalar. Distance is the only one where direction doesn't matter. Uh, position and displacement, therefore, must be good. So direction does matter for distance, sorry, for uh, position and displacement. Distance was how far something moves, right? A pretty straightforward definition, how far something moves. What was the symbol for distance? Cameron's in the back doing this. I don't know that sign language or what's the symbol for distance? Good, delta D. What does the delta mean? change, right? When we're talking about a distance, some, how far something's moved, when well, we're talking about a change in something, right? You're not where you were. Where you are has changed. So there's going to be a change. Okay, We're going to call it delta D. Um, the units for distance would be meters. Good. Typically, okay, there's sometimes when we can use kilometers. In fact, there's a lot of times when you use kilometers, but there's sometimes when we can't. So the standard units are meters um, you're going to learn later on when you can't use kilometers and when you can't use millimeters and miles and so on. Um, if in doubt, go with meters, right? Because it always works. What about position? What's that, that definition, that short definition for position that we learned yesterday? Yep. Yeah, it's where something is, where you are at a specific moment in time. Okay, what does position not have that distance does have? What's, what's like, forget about the symbol, the units, all that stuff, right? Just fundamentally, position doesn't have this, whereas a distance traveled does have this. What's the one word that I'm looking for here? change. Okay, there's no change when we're talking about position. We're talking about where you are right now or where you are later on five minutes from now, but it's still where you are at a specific moment in time. It's not measuring any kind of change. So what's the symbol not going to have if we're talking about position? It's not going to have the delta. Right. Good. It has the little half arrow over top of it. What does that half arrow mean? What's the little half arrow mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a vector, right? That's our little cheat, right? We have our data sheet, our equation sheet with all these equations on it. If we forget whether something's a vector or a scalar, we check our data sheet and we see whether it's a vector or a scalar. Units are going to be meters as well, right? Displacement, how did we define that one? That's our last one, right? Jack, what was displacement? Yeah, it does. Change in what, though? Change, yeah, close, close. Yeah. Yeah, it's change in position. So if it's going to be change in position, it's going to be position with a delta in front of it. And, of course, it's going to be meters. It's a vector. If position's a vector, then displacement's going to be a vector as well. There were two ways that we learned yesterday that we might find displacement. You guys remember what those two ways were? What if we had two positions? Right? We can get displacement from positions or we can get displacement from displacements. If I tell you if I tell you what my two positions were between now and five minutes ago, you can get displacement. If I tell you how far I walked and then how far I walked again, you can get displacement. How do you get displacement when you're given two different positions? Good. Positions subtract. So it's going to look something like this. Delta D is equal to final position 
minus the initial position, DF minus DI, right? Position minus position. What if I have displacements though? What if I said I walked five meters to the north and then I walked uh, 10 meters to the north again? How would I find the displacement then? I'm going to add them up, right? So it's going to be delta D1 plus delta D2. And one more question before we take a look at the three questions we had for homework here. Distance and displacement, they're almost the same thing, right? Almost. But distance is a scale or no direction. Displacement is a vector. It does have a direction, right? Um, when are they the same number? I mean, clearly displacement has a direction. But when are distance and displacement the same number? When are they not the same number? Good. If you're moving in the same direction and you're not changing direction, then the number for distance and displacement will be the exact same thing. There will be a direction with displacement, not for distance, but the number will be the same. But if I change direction midway through, then my distance will be a certain number. My displacement will be a different number, a lower number. Make sense? Okay. What's the higher number always going to be, distance or displacement? Distance. Distance will always be either, I shouldn't say it'll always be the higher number because sometimes it's the same, right? But if one of them's higher than the other, distance is always going to be the higher one, right? All right, let's take a look at those three questions we had for homework on page nine. Um, which one or ones would you like to go over here? Generally what happens when we have homework here guys, is that I'm not going to go through all of them unless you want me to go through all of them. If everybody completely understands question number one, then we don't need to waste our time going over question number one, right? If there's some people that don't, then we go over it. Okay. So let's, uh, usually what I do is seek input from you as to which one or ones that we need to go over. Any of these that we need to go over? No? All right, well, I want to take a look at question number three then. I'm going to pick that one. Question number three says, well, building a wall of brickware sweeps the cement back and forth. If she swings her hand back and forth a distance of 1.7 meters four times, calculate the distance and displacement her hand travels during that time. You know, well, let's get displacement first. Let's get displacement first. Okay, she swings her hand back and forth 1.7 meters four times. 1.7, watch my hand, okay? This is starting point right here, okay, right here. 1.7 meters, 1.7 meters. 1.7 meters, 1.7 meters. What's her change in position there? Zero. She moved, but she ended up back where we started. Okay, that's like the question where, I think we had one in an example where you run around the track. Did we have that one? No, maybe that's, maybe that's on the worksheet that's coming here a little bit later on. Okay, well, I'm going to give you the answer to that question right now. When you run around the track, which you're all going to do because you're all going to join cross country, right? Um, Tuesday, you're going to run around the track. Run around the track 12 and a half times, sorry, 12 times. We'll say 12 times. It's going to say 12 and a half because that's 5K. But we'll say 12 times, which is almost 5K. You run around the track 12 times. End up back where you started, do some stretching. What's your displacement? Zero. Does that mean you haven't ran anymore? No, you've ran 4,800 meters. Your distance would be 4,800 meters. Your displacement would be zero. That's kind of the same thing here, right? We're back where we started. The displacement is zero. Is our distance zero? No, we know it's not zero because we changed direction, right? Back and forth. What's my distance here? Yep. It would be 6.8 meters, right? 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7 plus 1.7. Distance plus distance plus distance plus distance. Here, for displacement, it's still we're still adding them. But it's 1.7 plus negative 1.7 plus 1.7 plus negative 1.7, which gives us zero. Good. All right. What I'd like you to do right now is have a look then for the next few minutes at uh, the first worksheet in the booklet that I gave you. It's titled Physics 20 Worksheet Distance, Position, and Displacement. Give you a few minutes to work on that, and then we'll take a look at one or two of those and, and let you do the rest of them for homework. All right. We're going to define three more terms now. Well, we're going to define two of them, I should say, and describe three of them. Time, speed, and velocity. Time. This is a definition, this is a word that every, I guarantee you, every single one of us know what it is, but no, none of us 
can provide a good definition for. This is probably, in my mind, probably the most difficult word in the English language to define. How do you define time? I don't know. You look it up in the dictionary, there's nothing that's a good definition for time. We all know what it is. So you know what? We're going to take the easy way out here and not even define it. We all know what it is, right? The symbol for time, we are going to describe though, the symbol for time can either be T or delta T. When do you think it might be T? When do you think it might be delta T? Cameron? Yeah, good. It's 10.30 in the morning right now. That's T. If, if a few minutes later I said it's 10.37, that would be T as well. Seven minutes would be delta T. Make sense? The change in time. The difference in time between two moments in time. Quite honestly, you will almost always be dealing with delta T in physics. Almost always. I'm putting T there just in case you have to deal with certain time, okay, but you're almost always going to be dealing with the change in time, the time interval in physics. If in doubt, go with that one. What do you think the units would be? The standard units, that is. There's lots of units, right? But what do you think the standard units would be? Good. Seconds. Sometimes we could use hours and minutes and days. Sometimes those are fine to use. Seconds is always okay to use because that's a standard unit. Vector or scalar? Yeah, it's a scalar. We don't say it was seven minutes to the north or seven minutes to the west or seven minutes down. Time's a scalar. What's another way of knowing that time is a scalar without thinking about, oh, wait a second, it wouldn't be north. Yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. No time travel, at least as far as we know, unless one of you is from the future. And you're just not telling us. Look at the board right now. Looking at the board right now, what would be a way of determining whether time is a vector or a scalar? Yep. Doesn't have the half hour over top of the T, right? So we know it's a scalar right away. Okay, speed we're going to define. This one's, uh, we all know what speed is as well, but it's an easier one to define, so we'll do that. Speed is, give me a definition for speed. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to tell me what this is. Yeah, how fast you're going, how fast something moves. Works for me. There's lots of different definitions that I would take there, but that works. How fast something moves. What do you think the, what do you think the uh, symbol for it would be? A little bit odd, a little bit odd. Simon? Yeah, it's V. So you're kind of expecting it to be S, right? But it's not, it's V. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. Probably Latin, actually, is what it's from but originally. But. Ooh, units, units. Ooh. Commerce per hour, miles per hour. Yeah, yeah, meters per second. That's the standard units. Sometimes we can use um, kilometers per hour. Sometimes that's fine, but meters per second always works for us. And is speed going to be a vector or a scalar? That's a scalar. Yeah, it's a scalar. If you didn't know that, we can just look at this, right, and identify that there's no half arrow over top of it. It's a scalar. Velocity. I'm going to define that one for you. It's kind of the same as speed, real similar to speed, but we define it. Um, the definition sounds a fair bit different here. Velocity is going to be defined as the rate of change of position. Holy cow, what does that mean? Well, it, it means almost the same thing as speed. The rate of change of position. The rate. What does a rate mean? The rate at which this is done. The rate at which that is done. What does rate mean? Well, not necessarily. It could be speed, right? But it, it, there's lots of things that can be a rate. The rate at which you do your homework. Yeah, something over time. How quickly you do your homework, right? So really the rate of change of position is really how quickly the position changes. 
right? It's not your change in position. This summer, I drove to Toronto with my family to go to a couple Blue Jays games. My change in position between Okotoks and Toronto was about 3,500 kilometers. That doesn't tell me how fast it was going. It doesn't tell me anything about my velocity, right? My change in position or my displacement was really, really big. Was my speed really, really big? You don't know. Was my velocity really, really big? You don't know. Right? All you know is my change in position there. How quickly I went to Toronto is not my change in position. That's my velocity, the rate of change of position. In other words, it's displacement divided by time. What do you think the symbol for velocity would be? Yeah, be with a little half arrow over top of it. We're going to say it's meters per second again, and we're going to say that velocity is a vector. Now, I'm going to give you your first equation of the year. We've done a little bit of math by just adding and subtracting positions and displacements, right? But we're going to actually get an equation now. The first equation is going to be for speed. Speed is going to be equal to distance over time. Distance over time interval, not distance over specific moment in time, right? You'll never divide the distance over 10.36 a.m., but you might divide the distance over seven minutes, the time interval. This is for average... and constant speed. If you're accelerating, if you're speeding up or slowing down, this equation is not valid. It's valid when you're going at a constant speed, a non-changing speed, or an average speed. There's another equation, but it's pretty much the same as the first one. So you said you're only going to learn one. Well, it's really two, but it's almost the same. Velocity. It's going to be displacement divided by time. So you guys know how to find distance. You guys know how to find displacement. What you got to do now is get distance or displacement, if you're not given it already, and then divide it by time. So it's what you've done on that homework that you had last night and that worksheet that I assigned earlier today. But in addition to that, dividing it by time. It's almost the same thing, right? A little bit more work, but almost the same thing. What do the units would be again? Let me cover those up. No, that's a problem. I cover them up and you can still see them on my hands. What are the units? Meters per second, right? You see it on the board. It's meters per second. Where does it come from? Meters over seconds. Meters over seconds. Good. Okay, one more little thing before I... Uh, uh, no, I won't, actually. I'll, I'll do that a little bit later on here. A couple questions here. A couple of uh, example questions here. Unfortunately, again, you got to copy them out. I promise there's not that many of these ones you got to copy out this entire year. You probably see more over the first couple of days of Physics 20 than you see for the rest of the year. But this is one of them. So Regina is 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg, and Calgary is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. It takes a car and its driver eight hours to get from Regina to Calgary. What's the car's average speed? And velocity. What do we have given to us in this question? What are we told in this question? What do we know about Regina and Calgary and so on in this question? Positions. Yeah, good. We have two positions. How do you know those are positions? They have yeah, they have reference points, right? We know that it's not how far Regina has traveled, it's where Regina is, right? Think about that. Seriously, is Regina going to move anywhere? Regina is where it is and it'll always be there, right? Regina it doesn't have a displacement. It never does. It never will. This is a position. It's 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg, and it's 1350 west. Um, Calgary is 1350 west of Winnipeg. My time here, is that a T or is that a delta T? Is that a specific moment in time or, or an interval in time? Delta T, yeah. It, remember I said it's almost always going to be delta T? If in doubt, go with delta T, even if you're not 
hundred percent sure because you're almost always going to be right there. Okay, let's write down some givens and then let's answer these questions here. Um, let's say Regina. Um, actually, let's uh, let's define positive first. What do you want to make positive, east or west? West? Yeah, it might make sense to do that here because nothing's changing direction, right? If I've got east and west, I'm probably going to make east positive. But if I've got just west, you might want to make west positive. Let's say Regina. Uh, that's my initial position. I'm going to call that DI, and it's going to be positive 600 kilometers. Don't make it delta D. It's just D. Calgary, that's my final position. It's where I end up. Is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Carnet's driver, eight hours to get from Regina to Calgary. I want to find speed, and I want to find velocity. Now, the speed and velocity isn't changing, is it? I mean, presumably you're going at the same speed um, from Calgary to Regina. If you're not, we're looking for average. So average is like constant. You might be changing a little bit, but it's like a constant speed. It means we're allowed to use the equation that we learned just a couple minutes ago. Speed is distance over time. What's the distance traveled here? How far did I go from Regina to Calgary? Yep. 750 kilometers. Time is eight hours. Can I use kilometers and hours here? Sure, I can. What am I going to get for, for units for, for speed if I use kilometers and hours here? Kilometers per hour. That's okay. okay. Sometimes it's not okay, but this time it is okay. Again, I'll tell you when it's not okay. Do the math there, and I think it worked out to be 93.75. We'll just make it 94 kilometers per hour. The average speed, 94 kilometers per hour. Let's deal with average velocity now. It's displacement divided by time. What's the displacement here? Final minus initial, 1350 minus 600. It's 750 divided by 8 hours. Wait a second. It's the same thing. 94 kilometers per hour. A couple questions here, though. Firstly, what does the positive mean down here when I have 94 kilometers per hour for velocity? What does the positive mean? Yep, it means west. Good. What does the positive mean up here for speed? Nothing. So we get this same answer, but the positive means something here. The positive doesn't mean anything here. West, nothing. Second question, why are these two numbers the same? Why isn't the velocity a different number than the speed? Good. From when we went from Regina to Calgary, we didn't change direction. We just kept going in a straight line. Okay. I mean, if you've ever driven that road, it, it is largely a straight line from Regina to Calgary. Um, and if you're not changing direction, then it's going to be the same number, just like distance and displacement were the same number when we didn't change direction. Good? Okay, I got another one for you. This one says a hiker walks 300 meters east and 1,200 meters west. Takes the hiker 1,800 seconds. What's the hiker's average speed and velocity? Hey, what's, uh, I mean, there's a couple things that are different about this question, right? But what jumps out at you right away as being different about this question versus the last one? Something that could lead to a mistake, actually, pretty easily. Sorry? Yeah, we got an east and a west in here. What do we really have to be careful of here? Let's, def let's really make sure we define something as positive, right? If in the last question we forgot to do that, we would have probably gotten away with it, right? We probably still would have ended up getting the right answer. In this question, if we don't do that, we're going to make a mistake here because we're going to say 300 and, and 1,200. That's wrong. It has to be 300 and negative 1,200. Okay, what else? In the last question, we were given positions. In this question, we're given... These are displacements. The hiker walks 300 meters. The hiker isn't 300 meters. We don't know where the hiker is. Maybe the hiker's in Banff. Maybe the hiker's in Mount Everest. I don't know. We don't know where the hiker is. We just know the displacement of the hiker. Um, a couple of displacements of the hiker and the time that it takes, 1,800 seconds, 
I want to find the average speed and velocity. So let's write down those givens now. My first displacement would be 300 meters. My second displacement would be 1,200 meters, right? 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 Usually when I say right, 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 usually I'm kind of leading you somewhere, right? What should this be? Negative 1,200 meters. Could you have defined it the other way around, by the way? Could you have made west positive? Sure you could have. Sure you could have. It's not normal to do that, but it's okay. Define it any way you want as long as you specify. My time interval here is 1,800 seconds. I want to find the average speed, and I want to find the average velocity, just like last time. Speed, we know, is distance over time. Now, the speed probably is changing here a little bit, but we're looking for the average, so this equation is still valid. Distance, what's my distance here? What is it? 1,500 meters. 300 plus 1,200 meters. How come I didn't pay attention to the negative there? Yeah, this is displacement, right? The distance there is 1,200 meters, not negative 1,200. The displacement is negative 1,200. Time is 1,800 seconds. Uh, 300 plus 1,500, sorry, plus 1,200 is 1,500 divided by 1,800, I think is 0 0.83. Is that right? 0 0.833 meters per second. Now let's do the other one here. V for, for velocity is displacement divided by time. What's my displacement here? Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're still going to add, right? We're still going to add these numbers, but this time when we add these numbers, we're adding a negative value in here. So it becomes 900 meters is my displacement for a time of 1,800 seconds. Negative 900, actually, isn't it? Do the math there. It works out to be, I think, negative 0 0.500, right? couple questions here. First of all, what does the negative mean down here in red for velocity? It means to the west. What does the positive mean up there for speed? It means what? Nothing. Right? I think somebody said east. It doesn't mean east. It means nothing. Okay, for speed, it means nothing. Uh, why are these two numbers different? Last question, they were the same. Shouldn't speed and velocity be the same number? Check. Yeah, because I, I switched directions, right? I was going east, then I went west. Switched directions, all bets are off. Good? We asked a similar question here earlier when we were reviewing position, uh, sorry, distance and position and displacement. Um, distance and displacement, unless they're the same, distance will always be bigger, right? Okay, speed and velocity, sometimes they're the same. But if they're not the same, which one's always going to be bigger? Speed, right? Okay, I got one more for you here, okay? One more. And then I'm pretty much done talking, then you can just do some work. This is from your textbook, so you don't need to copy out this question. Just reference it. 1.7, page uh, 37. Find the average velocity of a student who jogs 750 meters east in five minutes, does static stretches for 10 minutes. What does that mean, does static stretches for 10 minutes? Yeah. Stops running, yeah. Stops, just stops, not, not moving, right? Static means not moving. Then runs another three kilometers east in 30 minutes. Um, what is something that uh, kind of gets your attention in this one that might lead to a bit of a mistake here? Not a bit of a mistake, a really important mistake. Stretching? Okay, so what, what's the deal with that stretching? What do we got to do with that? Do we not use it? Do we use it? Do we have to include it? Okay, so there's something else. One's in meters, one's in kilometers. Absolutely. We've got to be really careful that we... What units do we want to be in there, kilometers or meters? I, I think meters would be easier as well, although it doesn't really matter. Okay, you can be kilometers there. That's fine, as long as you're consistent. That's, that's the key there. Back to the, whole, back to the whole static stretches again, though, for a second there, okay? Because that is a good point. Do we include the time and the distance for the static stretches or not? Uh, yes, we do. 
Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, when you're driving a long distance, and you guys have all taken road trips before, and I, I don't know if you guys think like I do or, or not on road trips. I like to always, and, and even when I was young, like you guys, I, I would still think this way, right? You got a big road trip. You're going to Regina, let's say, 800, 750 kilometers. Okay? I would, you know, you you see that sign on the road that says Regina is 400 kilometers away. And what would you do in your head? That's eh, about four hours, right? Do you guys do that? Okay. So in your head, you're kind of doing physics, right? Without even realizing you're doing physics. Okay. You know you're going to average about 100 kilometers an hour, and you're going to get there in about four hours, right? But what if you stop? What if you stop for lunch for a half an hour? Well, then you're then it's going to take four and a half hours. Why? Because your average speed is going down, right? You counted the time when you were stopped. Okay, in your head, you're saying, oh, okay, wait a sec. It's, it's not going to be four hours anymore because my average speed is going to be less than 100 kilometers per hour. When we're stopped in there somewhere, we, we include that when we're calculating average speed or velocity. We're going to include that here as well. So we're going to say here, uh, what do we got here? This would be a displacement, right, versus a, versus a position. It's how far somebody's gone. Displacement is 750 meters. Let's make east positive. Let's make that D1, displacement 1. Displacement 2 would be what? Tyson, what would displacement 2 be? 3,000 meters? No. Zero meters, good, because we're counting that one, right? Now, if you left that off, like, that would be okay here, right, because it's, it's zero. But I'll show you in a second why I wanted to include it there. Delta D3 is going to be what? What is it? 3,000 meters. Okay, what is delta T1? Time interval 1. Five minutes. What's delta T2? Ten minutes. And delta T3? Thirty minutes. Tyson, the reason that I wanted to put zero in here, I mean, if I left it off, I'd get away with it, right? But the reason I want to put zero in here is just to be consistent with notation. Okay, if I was saying first interval, second interval, static stretches, third interval, Okay. I wanted my subscripts to agree with each other, so I didn't want to call this 3,000 meters because then D2 would go with T3. Does that make sense? It wouldn't be a big deal, but I think it's just a little bit easier for us to follow if we do it that way. Okay, let's find the average, average velocity. Displacement divided by the time here. Displacement is 750 plus 3,000 is 3,750. Time is, what is that, 45 minutes? If I do it this way, what are the units going to be for velocity? Meters per minute. Is that okay? It's a little odd, but yeah, it's okay. Okay, I'm going to switch it actually just to make it a little bit neater. What do you want to switch minutes to? Seconds? Meters per second? Sure, sure. Yeah, that, that works. Um, how would you convert it to seconds? 45 minutes equals how many seconds? Yeah, take 45, multiply by 60. Yeah, 2,700 seconds. As you understand, it's not wrong to do this. It's not wrong to do what I just did. It's not wrong to leave it in minutes. But it's a little bit more normal to do this. I think when you do that, you get um, what is it? 1.38. Okay, so we'll go 1.4 meters per second. Don't worry about where to round it to right now. That that comes. We'll talk about that a little later on. 1.4 meters per second. Good. Good. All right, let's set you free on a couple questions here. 
I'll walk around, make sure you ask questions. Stop me if you struggle with anything here, okay? Okay, let's have a look up here at question number two, guys, okay? Person A runs a 100-meter dash in 9.84 seconds. That used to be the world record, right? It's not anymore. Usain Bolt has far surpassed that in the last several years. What's the world record now? 9.59, actually. Yeah, 9.59. He crushed his own world record, which I think was I think was 9.69 or 9.72 or something like that before that. Like he's unbelievable. You know what? You know how fast Usain Bolt runs? His his peak speed. I mean, he's running he's running 100 meters in 10 less than 10 seconds, right? All world class sprinters would run 100 meters in less than 10 seconds, but he runs it particularly fast. You know what his peak speed is? His peak speed is almost almost 15 meters per second. So for perspective, 15 meters per second is about from that wall past this wall. It's about halfway out to those rocks out there in one second. He runs almost 50 kilometers per hour at his peak speed, which he doesn't reach until he's about 60 or 70 meters, right? So he doesn't run that fast for that long. 50 kilometers per hour. Here's, here's the thing, right? You're at Usain Bolt and you're late for school and you start running. Like you get a ticket for speeding in a school zone, right? You're that, you're that fast. Like you're going one and a half times the speed that you're allowed to go in a school zone, for heaven's sake. Um, this guy's fast too, not quite as fast as Usain Bolt though. Um, person B runs 200 meters in 19.32 seconds, which is also pretty good. Uh, person C, 400 meters in 1.9 minutes. Depends on, that might not be so bad. It depends on, on whether they're running hard or just kind of jogging, right? If you're sprinting, that's not so good. Find the average velocity for the trio. Compare it to each individual's average velocity. Assume they're all running in a straight line. Let's do the trio first, okay? Let's say uh, displacement one is 100 meters. Now let's say displacement two is 200 meters and displacement three is 400 meters. Let's say time one is 9.84 seconds. Let's say time two is 19.32 seconds. And time three is, uh, oh, 1.90 minutes. What are we going to do with that? Talked about that a little bit earlier. Change it to seconds. What is it? 114. Doesn't really matter whether you go minutes or seconds here, but we got to be consistent here, right? Okay, we want to find, uh, let's say the the overall average, the overall average speed. We're going to say distance over time. We're going to say it's 100 plus 200 plus 400 is 700 meters over a time of. Anybody have that total time? 143.1. Six seconds, thank you. Hey, by the way, why is, uh, look at this, this is a fast time for 100 meters, right? 9.84 seconds. Double it, what do you get? Double it, 9.84 times two. 19.6, how can somebody be faster when they have to run 200 meters? When do you get tired out? Like, shouldn't you be slower when you're running 200 meters per 100? That's exactly it, that's exactly it. What do we say exactly? What do we say about Usain Bolt? He reaches his peak at uh, of almost 50 kilometers per hour at 60 or 70 meters. Well, he gets to run at his peak for longer than the 200, right? He doesn't have that acceleration phase of 60 or 70 meters. I mean, like he's he's accelerating for three quarters of the race for heaven's sake, right? But in this one, he's not. So that's why that time can be better than that time. All right, what does that work out to be? 10.2 meters per second. No, I, yeah, it wouldn't be 10.2. Yeah, 4.89, that's right, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing there. 4.89 meters per second. So the average speed, 4.89 meters per second. So now we won't go through all of the rest of them, but we'll show you how to go through each of the rest of them here. Um, the first guy, his, his uh, speed is going to be displacement divided by time or distance divided by time. Uh, oh, we're looking for velocity, I guess, right? 
Uh, so it's going to be 100 meters divided by 9.84 seconds. And we get 10.2 meters per second. We do the same thing with the other. Where did that go? We do the same thing with the other ones as well. Works out exactly the same, right? Different numbers, but so 10.2 is the average. We see the same using bolt goes almost 15. Not on average, not the average, right? But maximum peak speed. Yeah, I don't know. That's not a very good strategy, is it? No. Usually you don't have your slowest guy in the anchor either. Okay. It's like, it's like, hey, you're so far ahead, and then it's like, oh, oh, yeah, Jimmy's going to run now. <laughs> no, that's it. That's a, there goes our chance. Is a, um, hey, one more quick thing, and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up here, okay? Um, what about direction here? And this question asks for velocity, right? Yeah, straight line. Here's the deal. Sometimes you got a you got a vector, but it doesn't tell you what direction it is. We assume the positive direction. Does that make sense? That might be north. It might be south. It might be up. It might be down. It's we're going to say it's the positive direction. Okay, make sense? So don't don't panic about the fact that you don't have a a north there or a west there, whatever. All right. That's it.